Hey, today on that Kelch Guy videos, we're gonna tackle the little issue of damaged corner bait. We're gonna show you how to fix that right after this. Hey, welcome back to that Kelty Guy videos here on YouTube and at thatkeltyguy.com. First of all, I want to welcome all of you. Thank you for joining me here in my community of that Kelty Guy do-it-yourselfers. My goal here on this channel is to empower you, to teach you how to do these things yourself because I know you can do it, but you need the right instruction. And if you get instruction that's not so great, you're going to end up with a not so great job. I've been doing this over 30 years. 15 years of that has been nothing but patching and repairing. So things like this, I've fixed thousands of them. But before we get started, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe if you like this video, if you haven't seen one before. If you like what you see, there's a subscribe button you'll see in the animation and be sure and click that bell icon because we appreciate you and that way you'll get notified of our next video. Also look in the links, uh, the description down below we're going to put a lot of links down there for you, like tools we use in the video, uh, links to our Amazon store and our website and so on. We also give away free guides on our website, a blog, give you different articles, tips and tricks. So a lot of good information down there, so check that out. Now, to get started on this, I, I'm on a big job here. This is an apartment that's been rented for quite some time and beat up pretty bad. And there's quite a few of these corners like this and what this is is there's a couple things that can cause this number one is this metal corner bead sometimes the mud just doesn't stick that great now under normal circumstances it'll usually last a long long time but in an apartment where it gets beat up like this run into furniture moved around they're not near as careful and honestly this one's been beat to heck it's going to bump into these and because that mud's not stuck quite as good it may pop loose or crack uh, I went ahead and got all this prepped before I thought about shooting this video so if I find a picture of some cracked corner bead I'm gonna throw it up on the screen here but basically you'll often just see a crack along this edge and sometimes it'll flake off just in little bits and pieces and what you do to fix these, they're not really overly hard if you've got some decent mudding skills, finishing skills. First thing I do is go along and just remove all this loose mud that's on here. Just use a six inch knife, four inch, whatever you got, a six in one, and just get underneath the loose stuff and peel it off. And a lot of times you can just run your knife up through here and that'll just shave it right off. It'll pop up pretty easy. I would only take off what's actually loose. You could probably strip the whole thing, but if it's not loose and cracking, there's not really any point. So once you get that cleaned off, then I usually scrape this, this corner, which is metal. You scrape that so that you got a nice clean corner to work off of. You don't want bumps of mud like right there. You probably can barely see it, but there's a little bump of mud. And then if you're running your knife, down here to coat it, it'll hit that and it'll actually chatter and make a little chatter mark. So the less of that you get, the better. Once you clean that all off, then the next thing is to check and make sure it's all secure. So what I usually do is kind of go along and tap. And you can look at it closely too. And if it's loose, you'll see, you'll tap it and that metal will move right there. If it does that, you need to secure it down a little bit. This one's actually fairly solid. Um, there's one spot right here. I'm not sure if that's showing on the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure that. And what you can do is just take a screw and run it in right along the edge. Just literally right along the edge. I usually try and go through the metal a little bit because it holds better. And don't go too far if you drive screws too far into corner bead, you can actually bend it, warp it, and kind of make things worse. Then you might want to check with your knife like that to see if that screw's set deep enough. As long as your knife doesn't bounce across it, it's deep enough. You're just trying to 
lock it down a little bit. Okay, then what you might want to do is go along here and just kind of belt this a little bit. It's not super critical, I don't think, but it kind of helps the mud blend in a little bit better. So, and I'm going to use this six in one. It's a little uh, sturdier. It's good for scraping like that. Okay, once you've cleaned up all the corner like that, you cleaned off that edge. Now the next step is, I like to go ahead and tape this, and you probably can use mesh tape, but the main thing about mesh tape here is that it's a little thicker than what I'm gonna show you. So what I'm gonna recommend you use here is this product. It's this one right here. This is actually called Fibafuse, F-I-B-A-F-U-S-E. I've talked about this on my other video. I believe it's the one about um, mesh tape versus paper tape. And it's a good product, but I think it has its applications where it shines better and others where it doesn't do so good. It's basically a woven fiberglass. You can probably see through it. It's the mesh tape is woven fiberglass, but it's much coarser. It looks more like this. And this is very fine weave and it's very thin. That's one of the things I like about it. It is really thin. I think it has really good strength and the fact that the mud actually goes into it, not just on it and below it. I think that gives it some extra, extra strength when it's in use. The weakness is it, this is a double-edged sword here it cuts too easy so that's a good thing because when you go to cut it it cuts really easy like that but sometimes that's a bad thing you're trying to when we're doing this sometimes we try and slide the tape with our knife and it cuts it too easily also for angles it is got a kind of a pre-crease zone down the middle where you should be able to that and put it in an angle but the only way I'd do that is with a double-sided corner taping tool because the way I normally do it I break this out and when you run this down the middle in the angle it tends to cut it again that's the kind of drawback is it cuts too easily see how easy that cut but for what we're doing here I think it works great because of the thinness. So we're gonna go mix up some hot mud. Then we're gonna run that down there and take this. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of a coat of mud on it. Then we'll just have to come back after that's set up and put another coat on. Now, in case you don't know what hot mud is, it's a fast setting joint compound like in this picture here. I think it's right here. And I'm gonna use Today I'll be using 45 minute hot mud. It comes in 5, 20, 45, 90, so on. Okay, let's go mix that up and we'll go ahead and coat this. Okay, I got my 45 minute hot mud mixed up here. So let's go ahead and get this tape on here. Now what I would do is put this tape right out to the edge of the corner bead because it's going to form a nice straight edge. We did that up here. And then just apply fairly firm pressure. Now when you put the mud on initially, just make sure you put plenty of mud on. This tape here, it's a little bit more forgiving, I think. Normally, you don't want to have any blisters at all, which means a lack of mud or too thin of mud under the tape. But this stuff, because the mud kind of goes through it, I think it's a little more forgiving of that. Basically wipe it until it's fairly 
flattened out. And then what I'm going to do is turn around and put a little coat of mud on it. Let me get a little wider knife here. And I'm going to go ahead and get the first coat of mud on this. See, there's something right there. See how it's making that chatter mark? And I missed it right there. It appears to be a nail sticking out. Yep, one little bitty nail. That's what a bump on the wall, a little bump sticking out will do that too. And that's basically it. That's all we do on this coat. So we're going to let that set up and then we'll come back and put a coat of regular all-purpose joint compound on it and we'll go from there. All right, what I did is I let this dry overnight. I actually ran out of material yesterday so I couldn't come back and coat this wet like I was going to. And that's perfectly fine if you're not in a big rush. This is a bigger job that's taken us two or three days so it works out. So the next step on this after you've let it dry overnight is sand it. Best way to sand it is one of these. It's a pole sander. It's got a nice flat pad, it gives you a great finish and it rotates. Do what you want. You can use a hand sander too. I would stay away from a sanding sponge, but you might could get by with it. Uh, what you're mainly trying to do on this coat here is not sand it perfectly smooth. You're trying to take off any high points that you left. A lot of times there will be lap marks like in this picture here, I'll try and show you an illustration. And those lap marks are the high point you want to sand off. Hopefully you didn't put this on so thick that you need to sand a lot. You want to put it on just thick enough to get that coverage that you want for the day. And then the next day you come back and do it again. So if you do use one of these, just be careful because basically the main problem with these is you can Kind of gouge they don't have that flatness which is a benefit a lot of times but the sanding pole it just stays nice and flat and does a better job so this one's already sanded but i'll show you what i basically did you just go over it enough to knock off the high points and the little goobers that got left behind this edge over here don't worry about it we're going to coat that wider and make it go away. Now you saw that I, I did this with the tape under here. Now if you decide to just coat it, is that totally wrong? No, actually I don't think it is. I've done it that way many times. I've never had a problem with it. It's kind of like going back to the way it was brand new. <clears throat> Except that that little line that broke there, where we saw it broke in a straight line, is kind of a weak spot. So this is the better way. But if you do just coat it, here's the key. You see this picture right here? You can see the edge showing through. That edge will telegraph back through the texture. So you gotta get it coated thick enough so that that edge just disappears. You don't want it too thick, but if there's just like probably a 32nd of an inch or 64th of an inch on there and it's sanded flat, then it's not gonna show. But you can see this little groove here. It shrank just a little bit and it's hot mud so it doesn't shrink as much, but it does shrink some. So we're gonna go ahead and put another coat on now for you. Okay, first question. I get asked all the time, because you guys are new to this, what am I using on here? I showed you what I used here. Now I'm switching to a lightweight all-purpose. When I say lightweight, a box of it weighs probably 30-ish. 32, 35 pounds, and this is the product we're using today. It's called USG Plus 3. It's a lightweight mud. It's a little easier to handle. It's still not totally light, but it feels a lot lighter in your pan. I think it does a great job. Shrinkage is reasonable. It's about as good as the others, and it sands really easy. 
and it goes on like butter. So it's just my preference. If you don't know what to use, try this. Don't go with the green label. It sands much harder, shrinks more. The green label, like in this picture here, we use that mostly for taping. It's got more adhesive in it and it's great for taping. But after that, if you're just gonna buy one, buy this all purpose plus three, it'll do everything you need to do and works better and easier sanding. Now last time we coated this with a 12 and we kind of choked up on the knife and only got it about eight inches wide. And I think I want to just go ahead and take it all the way to there. There's not much point in leaving an edge right there. But if you look, this is exactly 12 inches wide. And if you don't have at least a quarter to half inch overlap on each side, it's hard to go that straight. So that's where you get out the bigger knife. And in this case, we're going with a 14 because now we'll have good coverage. chipped off here this morning so we'll just fill that in when you're putting it on wide like this you don't want to push real hard or you'll push out all the mud kind of out of the middle it's kind of hard to show you but that pushed out the mud in the middle so lay your knife down a little bit more and that lets it put it on a little bit heavier you stand it up more you'll wipe more out but you only want to put it on thick enough to cover this edge barely. You don't want to try and build this unless you have to for some reason. So put it on and then I like to clean off my edge. I'm only doing one side. If I was doing two, I, I wouldn't do it quite that way. But. And anytime you're cleaning off that edge, go in a sawing motion. So see how my knife is moving in as I go up. What that does is it helps to, get my fingers out of it. It helps to more or less slice that off. If you just wipe, a lot of times you'll just push it right back over to the other side. So if you do this kind of slicing, you'll clean it off better without pushing it right back into the mud you're working on. So we got that rough on there. Now we're going to get some bubbles in this one. That's partly because it's painted underneath. We'll just fix those on the final touch up step. Sometimes you can let it sit for a few minutes, come back and wipe it again. And those bubbles you see appearing there will go away. And you notice there are more to this side, that's where it's painted. That paint doesn't let the moisture get out so well, so it bubbles. But if you overwork it, you're just gonna wipe everything off, so don't keep going over it. That's really about all you need to do for today. Then we'll sand it, scrape it. We'll do a real thin skim coat on it to fill in those bubbles, and then it's ready for texture. So we'll show you that next. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to show you some images here of the final product after I sanded it. All I did was sand it lightly, and then I sprayed this knockdown texture to match what's around it. And here's a little example of some of the other videos we have out there. So if you have any other needs for home improvement and home repair, be sure and check these out too. Just click on our channel name down below. Hey everybody, it's Guy, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Carla. And before you go, check out the link we got here on this page. We're gonna put some links to things like our website where you can get all kinds of bonus information, our free guide you can download, and more. And thanks for stopping by. Bye. See ya.